The red shirts began their takeover of downtown Bangkok around mid-March, and they are largely made up of the country's urban and rural poor, and they are also staunch supporters of Thailand's former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat. Ever since Prime Minister Apisir Bechichiva's government really came into power at the end of 2008, the red shirts have to a certain degree been felt as if they have been robbed. And so we have been seeing small-scale demonstrations since then, and then it really all culminated in these massive demonstrations that we saw taking place in mid-March. Now, a number of the red shirt uh, supporters that we have been talking to are saying that this is a result of increased frustration towards the government. They feel as if the government really isn't looking out for their rights. What they want is democracy, and they're absolutely refusing to back down in any which way whatsoever until these demands are met. Of course, there are those who are anti the red shirts, who do support the current government, who are saying that their uh, anger, their frustration is being fueled by Thailand's former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat himself, or at least by his supporters who are trying to make another grab for power. Well, the yellow shirts are a group of individuals who could be viewed as being responsible for the current prime ministers coming into power to a certain degree. They are largely defined as being anti Thaksin Shinawat, and they are very pro the monarchy. That is why we see them wearing this color yellow, because that is the color of the monarchy here. And the yellow shirts, to a certain degree, felt that uh, Thaksin Shinawat's policies, his attitude, and that of the red shirts was demeaning to the monarchy. And even though they were the ones, and we do have to point this out, that could be viewed as being responsible for the current government coming into power, this does not mean that they necessarily support it. I think a lot of the fear about speaking out publicly against the monarchy stems from the reality that it is such a taboo here. Nobody does it. Nobody would dare to do it. The consequences of doing it could go so far as to mean imprisonment, and no one really wants to take that risk. <laughs> Most recently what we've seen has been this mass demonstration by a group that has just emerged on the scene in the last few days and they're calling themselves the multicolored shirts and they are basically saying that they're nationalistic, that Thailand belongs to all of the Thai and that the red shirts need to evacuate this area of downtown Bangkok that they've been holding hostage for weeks now. They're not necessarily pro-government but they are anti-red shirts and if anything they are pro a crackdown. The current Prime Minister, opposite Vegejiva, has basically been holed up at a military base ever since the situation really escalated out of control. And he's been coming under a lot of very harsh criticism of people that are saying that he is basically being too soft on these demonstrators. He's let this go on for way too long. He's lost control of the situation. The government has basically been paralyzed, completely preoccupied with trying to find a way out of this scenario. This is an unspeakably difficult situation, though, because neither side here wants to be blamed for more bloodshed. So they both have to try to maintain their strong stance without backing down, but they also have to try to force the other side's hand without losing any of the ground that they may have gained. A lot of Thai people don't necessarily fall on either side of this brewing conflict, at least not in such an extreme way as those who are actually taking to the streets are. And they are very saddened, they are very afraid, they are very frustrated, they feel very insecure because to a certain degree everything that they have felt that was stable about their lives appears to be coming apart at the seams. It's really difficult to tell what's going to happen next because it's such a complicated situation. There's so many different moving parts. There's so many different players. And you also have the factor of human emotion. So the longer the situation drags out, the more these emotions just 
begin to intensify and the fear across the board is that these emotions will boil over into what many are saying could potentially be an all-out civil war and that the government, the parties involved are going to be losing this narrowing window of opportunity to bring about some sort of a viable resolution.